boys, fan girls, fan men, fan women, freaks, geeks, freaks, nerds, geeks, all the above. It happened. We survived it. We didn't even go, but but <laughs> we but, weren't even invited. We, we, we weren't even invited. But damn, our phones <laughs> were going off. Yeah, they really were. What's up, good people? Welcome back to Back to Class of the Cinematic Movie Podcast that takes you back to the iconic films of 20 years ago right here on the Big Three, iHeartRadio, iTunes, and Spotify. Spotify. I put iTunes and iTunes. Wow. I don't know why I did that. Why'd you do that? Major puff for iTunes, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Spotify. <laughs> Spotify. Uh, I am your guy, Jay Alonzo. With me, of course, is... Danger Neff. David Danger Neff. How are you, partner? What's happening, dude? You know, it's uh, rounding the corner of this year, finally. I had to go to, like, the doctor this morning. You know what? I had to get up at, like, 5.45 in the morning to go to this doctor. Uh I got to tell you, I was pretty happy with the nurse practitioner that I saw there. She was gorgeous. Huh. Absolutely gorgeous. She had, like, this this deep blue, like, dress with, like, flowers on. She she was wonderful. She was really nice. nice, You know? Lovely lady. It, it was. It was. It's been a rough couple of months, bud. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so uh, here we are. Uh, I to. Uh, I'm also uh, coming off of a wild weekend. Um, we celebrated Grandma's birthday, right? Uh, or oh, uh, well, correction. Everybody, my family's birthday is in fucking July, and everybody came out. So it was cool. Had a blast. Uh, hung out with the, with the family and uh, hopped in the pool and. Did all that good stuff, barbecue, DJ music, and you know the whole that whole thing. Oh man! But anyway, shout DJ out to J Alonzo, DJ Alonzo, DJ J Alonzo. Listen. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so today instead of going back to the classics, we're gonna keep it uh, present day and look more forward to the future because we just had San Diego Comic Con 2019. I mean, you really could have called it Scare Diego. In this one, if you really think about one. it, you know, um, it Horror was itself won a lot this year. Yeah, of course, and of course, we're we're going to talk about we're going to talk about some of the highlights that happen in here. But I got to say, for for it being like San Diego Comic Con, it was a little lackluster, don't you think? I felt the same way. Um, well, obviously, except for Marvel, but we'll, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. But I, I felt the same way. Uh, I was definitely like most. I was uh, on my phone a lot, checking about the updates. Seeing whatever we, we can get out of it. Now, what I, what I what I do find interesting is, well, we've talked about this. I'm not really into TV like that, right? Like it's hard to find a show that I I get, I, I get hooked on, and I and I'm just gonna I'm just dedicated to that show. Sure. Uh, but I will say, uh, and, and no, we're a movie show. There's been a, there's a few trailers. Of upcoming uh, TV series, I'm quite looking forward to actually. Yeah, I agree. At least check them out to see to see, to see if, they, if it can grab me. Like right, that. see if it if it holds the weight or holds its punch. Um, one that really stood out to me was uh, Watchmen. Um, me being a fan of of the comic from Alan Moore, obviously, and also the 2006 three and a half <laughs> three three hour epic that came out that was a shot for shot of what the comic book was supposed <laughs> to look like. Um, I was I was a pretty I, I was pretty uh you know when it first came out when the trailer first came out it's kind of like V for Vendetta esque uh-huh. you know um so it, it's one of those things where if you were a fan of V for Vendetta which I was um I was then too. then then you were excited for it but it's like this one you know it felt like it, when the first trailer came out it felt like it might have actually retconned a little bit of stuff which I wasn't going to be happy about because. The comic book is just so legendary in itself. But this, to kind of kick off the way that it did, I got to say, man, like, it could really turn into something special. Well, I love the fact that you have uh, Regina King in there, eventually has the lead of the show. Right. Uh, and she's on a roll. So um, I- I'm into it. Uh, I also love the Watchmen movie. Um, I didn't read the comic book, but I can only imagine it's like the comic book coming to life. Right. Um, but uh, I know my favorite character was definitely uh, Dr. Manhattan. Yeah. Yeah. Big old blue penis big, himself. Big, big blue guy. Big blue penis himself. Big blue penis. <laughs> uh, but uh, we we got some trailers uh, at, at this year's Comic-Con. Well, hold on. Because yeah, there's a couple more TV things. You know, The Witcher. Like well, oh, The, the Witcher, Witcher. Yeah. yeah which the, is what I was looking forward to. Right. Um, you know, and that was that was kind of a big deal because remember, this is the, the show that basically got Superman away from Superman. Right. You know, um, 
that was definitely one of those that that uh, that was definitely interesting. But you are right. There are some movie trailers that definitely hit. Unfortunately, I don't I don't want to say they didn't have the emotional punch, but let's keep in mind like one time JJ Abrams literally brought Hall H, you know, into a John Williams concert for Star Wars music. Right. right. And so it's like when you think of like that, you're like, "Oh man, that's kind of that's kind of the thing that you're paying like this top dollar for." And so when so it, it kind of leaves a sour taste into everybody's mouth because unlike the Las Vegas Comic Con, which we're absolutely grateful that we're here, San Diego Comic Con really is where it's happening at. Right. You know, but, you know, that being said, there were some exciting trailers that we could see. Uh, well, which one do you want to kick off first? Uh, well, um, which one, you know what? We did say that it's, it's leading off into a horror one this, this, this weekend. Horror. Horror. <laughs> horror actually won a lot this weekend it did um so what we'll do fuck it man it's chapter two yeah you want to kick off with that let's All go right. with that one um when i tell you my level of excitement is through the roof for this movie uh the trailer which i i i can't remember the last time i actually said this but it's been the first time that uh, uh the formula of the teaser Followed by the trailer can be so effective. I thought the, the, the teaser for this movie was fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, fantastic. Now you get the full trailer. You get your, you know you, you're, you're reintroduced to the characters to, to the Losers Club. Uh, you get to see them in, in adult form. Pennywise is great, but the issue is you you typically kind of grow to expect to either really like the trailer or uh, I could I could kind of do without it. And then you also hope that they don't show you too much, right? This trailer is is formed so perfectly to the point to where I'm getting kind of creeped out <laughs> just by watching the trailer, you know? Um one of the most one of the more standout scenes to me in the trailer is when uh adult or James McAvoy is in is in the little uh, mirror land with the kid, Pennywise is in there too. Uh, but he he can't figure out what's real, what's not. The kid's in there, and obviously Pennywise is going for the kid to fuck with him. And it's just this 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 tension filled moment. I don't like being in in in, in mirror rooms and, and services. I hate them. You know, mirror rooms are really effective in movies. Yes. Um, I feel like they don't get enough attention, mm -hmm. and it's funny because <laughs> uh, uh, in Spider Man Far From Home. There's actually a scene with a mirror room that's actually incredibly effective in what it does. But yeah, you're absolutely right. Like that creepiness with the mirror room and 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 you see the danger that's coming to you. You mm -hmm. just don't know where it's coming from. But it's coming to you. You just don't know where. And I also love the monologue that Pennywise gives like for 27 years. I've dreamt of you. I've craved you. You know, you know how eerie that shit sounds. It's so scary, you know. Part two, I remember. So I remember when part two came out of the original TV, the TV series, mm -hmm. and uh, the the biggest name that was attached to that was uh, John John Ritter. Right. All right. Um. And just wasn't good. Like, like in general, it, it wasn't good at all. Like, mm -hmm. there is one scene that. That they do, and I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it was supposed to be for comedic laughs or not, um, because it looked like it was serious. But there was this whole thing where, like, like Pennywise was like, was like, "Kiss me, fat boy," <laughs> and I just can't stop fucking laughing at that shit because it's so stupid to see. But it's Tim Curry, uh, Tim Curry, excuse me, Tim Curry, Tim Curry at his absolute best. Also, but. Yeah, oh, no, I'm sorry. but yeah, like this trailer looks infinitely better than uh, than the current one. Go ahead, you and, and I can tell you um, the last shot, which I believe is Pennywise, right? But his face is like melting, so his eye does this weird uh, pivot. Uh, I want to say his 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 right eye does this weird pivot, right? Which I thought was CGI. Turns out that scars are doing that. Oh my god! I'm nope. Like, can you be any more nope. fucking creepier? <laughs> he he can really do that with his eyes. Nope. Which like, oh, dude, dude, <laughs> dude, dude. I can't rock with you. I can't do it. But in chapter two, uh, looks fantastic, man. Um, I, I can tell you, it has a lot to live up to, you know, compared to the first movie. But 
I am so in. I mean, I'm so, what is the drop? October? Oh, oh I, I don't remember. It, it has to be October, right? I think like September 26th. Or something like that. It's definitely within the next like 30 to 40, so 30 to 60 days. Or something. Anyway. I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely. All right. So while we're in the, uh, while we're in the uh, horror realm, you, uh, uh, you, you should kick this one off. Uh, I'm excited for this one. Um, this this definitely guy. This definitely at least has my attention. Um, if any of you were kids and read Alvin Schwartz' scary stories to tell in the dark, uh, they dropped a full trailer uh, for this, or at least the introduction of Jangly Man uh, into into this particular trailer. And I gotta say, like, I. I could not picture a better director to actually uh, to actually direct this than Guillermo del, del Toro because oh, yeah. I think of like Hellboy and Hellboy Two and and how how creepy some of the manifestations of of the creatures uh, that he did uh, were part of that. Didn't he do Pan's Labyrinth as well? Yep, sure did. So so that entire like creepiness of what the models of character and horrific designs you got to keep in mind like. Like the way scary stories to tell in the dark uh, is going to be is going to be about there. It's basically going to be all sh- all these short stories, mm-hmm. probably no more than twenty to thirty minutes mm-hmm. a piece, or even or even shorter. Um, t- talking about like one particular like aspect of horror and and just turning that into something. Right. This this shots for it though. The character designs, seeing it actually in in, in person, like. Del Toro knows how to get under your skin. Mm-hmm. Like, like it's just like it's frightening to see like this basically oogie boogie good looking motherfucker <laughs> coming coming straight at you, <laughs> shambling like towards you. Oogie boogie. You know, it's kind of creepy to like think about because we don't think of oogie boogie as creepy until you see like like full size human size version of uh, uh, of this uh, creation. What'd what do you think? Uh, I'm with you on this one. Um... I'm actually watching the trailer right now. I've seen it before, but uh, this trailer, number one, I have, I have to give them uh, credit where credit's due. This looks like a hard R, but it's not. It's PG-13. See, and I wonder if that's the right choice, though. Honestly, with Guillermo del Toro, I actually trust in him to give me as creepy and vile and weird as you possibly can and still keep it clean. Um... I'll say this: the first trailer for this movie with the uh, I'm gonna assume Jangly Man is the guy that's hung up, kind of like a scarecrow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, so no, Jangly Man was a dude off the roof. The roof. Okay, so this is the scarecrow thing. Right. That's when Harold. I, Harold the scarecrow. When I saw that, that creeped me out. Cause <laughs> I, I I recall reading the book when I was younger, but obviously you know you know you have all these these, these course curriculum books you have to read growing up, so you know. Lots of just that, this, they don't stick. But I remember reading the book, but I remember the book, it just didn't stick with me. Seeing this trailer now, uh, the first trailer with Scarecrow and how the camera kind of just pans into him, like dead in his face, and you watch the bugs and whatnot, it's just, it creates that eerie, eerie feeling, you know, and, it, and, and to know that, 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 that this movie's gonna play out as it's separate stories. In one movie, right, and it's going to be that's what's really going to make it so effective. It makes you wonder because, what, what they're holding on to. What, so, what's not showing you yet. So it's funny because when you think of like, think of like when you're a kid and think of like what was scary then. You mm-hmm. know, uh, the dark, for example, or scarecrows in itself were were a, were not necessarily like scary, but you know, obviously, like other directors and uh, directors of TV shows have actually played that to us, literally, like. This new, the new, uh, the new scarecrow in Batman, mm-hmm. like his whole thing is is about causing fear. Um, what I thought, what I think is just so fascinating about this is that Del Toro is basically given like free reign to kind of do whatever that he wants to do. And you're absolutely right; you can create scary without needing that hard R right. uh, to be a part of it. Because because a perfect example of that is like. Uh, um, uh, the haunting of Hill House. All yeah. right, that is absolutely a terrifying like like TV show to kind of go through, especially episode eight. Like it just like like there was this one jump scare that just like got got me so good. I was like, what the? Anyway, so right. <laughs> but I think I think scary stories tell in the dark 
it, it's going to be that same that same concept. Like like the creatures look creepy and weird. You know, you don't know what they're about unless you've read the books, obviously. Mm-hmm. And to kind of see how it's all going to play out is just going to be fascinating in my eyes. All right. So what what, what does this drop? So it, it drops. It's actually cu- it's coming out sooner than you think. August 9th. Oh, so like two weeks. So like, yeah, we're like two weeks away from okay. it. Okay. All right. So uh, moving along. Uh, now, just before you get to this next trailer, um, what is your expectations of Terminator Dark Fate? Uh, um, all right. Terminator Dark Fate has the potential to be the best one since T2 in mm-hmm. my eyes. Um, but I don't have a whole lot of faith in it yet. Cause now we're in, we're in this, this new thing to where like, you know what? Forget three, four and five. Well, let, let's just listen. This is the official third one. The rest, they don't matter. Right. And yeah, but didn't they do that with Halloween last they year? They, you did. know, they, they like retcon and forgot about the 20 years of Halloween movies that they did. You mm-hmm. know, and 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 in my eyes, like the new Halloween, and by the way, which that was also announced, also because yeah, Halloween they're getting, two and three, yeah, two and three, which is supposed to finish it off. Or whatever. Halloween kills, kills, and, and Halloween, Halloween ends. ends. Yeah, right. The titles I'm not too thrilled <clears throat> about, but whatever. It's whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, I feel like it could have. Kind of that same impact where where you think it's trying to take something to a new direction, but it's really not. Right. You know, it's not forcing it. You want to know what's an interesting concept that I I love the idea of it. Do you remember the uh, Terminator Terminator Salvation? Christian Bell. Yeah, I thought the it was. Meltdown. I thought it was a pretty decent movie, mm-hmm. but I thought the alternate idea of how the movie actually ends was going to be infinitely better. Because right. re- do you remember? Do you do you remember what it was? The alternate ending? alternate ending. Yeah. Uh, what would be uh, John Connor supposed to be an actual Terminator? So yes. Uh-huh. So basically, what was supposed to happen is that John Connor actually dies, mm-hmm. and nobody finds out about it. And what happens is that they basically take they basically take a they they basically do a, a face off transplant with Christian Bale taking Sam Worthington's place. And he suddenly becomes the Terminator, right. you know, and is supposed to, you know, lead the resistance at this point because John Connor is the point of the future. Right. right? That's been like instilled in our heads since Terminator 1. Right. Right. Um, I thought that was such an interesting concept than just killing off Sam Worthington. Like I'm like, I'm like, that could have really – it would have been a weird way to take the series, but do it. Like – like it's well, it, at this point it doesn't matter, but exactly because it's like because there hasn't been a good one. There well, has been and, a good and, one and since Judgment Day. I, I kind of feel like it's a cheap cop out because I remember paying money to go see Salvation. I remember paying money to see uh, Genesis. Oh God, I did not go see Jenny Smith, but I I uh, I did see it. That I was like, this movie is horrible. Yeah, the movie's just bad. Yeah, but um, I I'll say this. I have a lot of faith in Tim Miller. Uh, the fact that Jim Cameron at one point said Genesis is the best one since T2. And we all know how that turned out. So I can't right. really go with Cameron and his word. Right. But the first trailer comes. I'm, I'm into it. Uh, Linda, Ham- Linda Hamilton looks fantastic. Yeah, she does. Movie. And to now uh, they just announced that Furlong, that Furlong is back. going to be in it. Yeah. So uh, and, and let's see where it goes. But again, you know, they at this point, if – if Dark Fate doesn't work, end the series. We're done. Like we, we're, we're, we're like like a bad girlfriend. We're, we're done. Like it's 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 that bad right now. Because mm-hmm. Rise of the Machines was ultimately forgettable. We were only excited because Arnold was back as actual Terminator. Right. That's the only reason why we gave a shit about it. Right. Exactly. You know. Um. And then they had Salvation, which had probably the biggest box office draw at the time. Christian Bale, Christian Bale, you know, and an upcoming star in Sam Worthington because this, av- this is after Avatar. He's and and at the time Bale is in between what Batman Begins, what Dark Knight. I think this was actually after Dark Knight. after Dark Knight before Rises before Rises. Right. So it's like it's kind of right there, you mm-hmm. know. And then and and they also had Anton Yelchin as well. Right. May rest May rest in peace. Um. And then they also had uh. And then Genesis like 
you know, you had you had once again Arnold is back, and you actually had um, um, what's her name, Amelia Clark. I can't remember the dude who was in it. Jason, Jason Clark. Jason Clark is in it. Somebody Connor. else is in it. Also, uh, it? Uh, Doesn't matter. So forgettable. So uh, they also had the Sarah Connor Chronicles, which wasn't bad. No, it wasn't bad. Mm-hmm. But that's what I mean. Like, like you've had four opportunities to give us a decent product, right? If you can't get it on this fifth one, leave I, leave done. the product alone. I'm done. So, which brings us to our uh, third uh, trailer that, that we'll discuss today. Before we get to, jeez, uh, don't hype it up or anything. Well, <laughs> which will get us to our third trailer here today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, our third trailer. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Top Gun Maverick Top officially. Top Gun Maverick. Officially uh, released wow. its, uh, its, uh, its official trailer. Now, I'll say this. Uh, <clears throat> you never watched Top Gun, so I don't know. The kid just went off real quick. I have never seen the first Top Gun. I do know, and I also respect it. It's well loved and respected amongst the uh, film lovers community. Uh, apparently, one of Tom Cruise's like best flicks ever. I, but I, I've always been I've always been aware of the references, the references, the references to Top Gun. As far as I won't let, I won't let you down, Goose, uh, the Goose character as a whole, Maverick as a character itself, and of course, Highway to the Danger Zone. <laughs> so that's how I know Top Gun. Okay, but watching this trailer because I know nothing about it, it it uh. I don't want to say it sounded, it looked boring, but I don't really know what's going on. Oh my God. Well, that's because you need to watch the first one. And a I little will. Bit. And I will. But no, I'm just saying. You know when we're doing this? We're going to do this as a super throwback so I can force you to watch this movie. Mm. That's how irritating you've made me over this now. <laughs> I, 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 I can tell. I just made you really upset. <laughs> but uh, look, <laughs> listen, listen to the cast by itself Tom Cruise, Miles Teller, John Hamm, is, Ed, Harris. Uh, is, uh, Ed Harris is in it. Uh, Jennifer Connelly, uh, Connelly uh, is in this. She's in the first one, right? No, that was Kelly McGillis. Right, okay. Um, and uh, Val Kilmer, who reprises his role as Iceman, right? Now, this is a really interesting concept because, and, and, and I have to take this a little bit uh, on a more personal note, but my father was in the Air Force for uh, for. 26 years and continue to work on aircraft for another nine. So 35 years of aircraft experience mm-hmm. kind of happened with this. What was really, really awesome about the original Top Gun was, was kind of like the, the, first of all, there was something just so cool about it because it's the best of the best fighting, uh, fighting, you know, in these, in these aircraft. Now in today's military, I, uh, now in today's military, the value of the life of the pilot versus the value, Versus the value of the uh, of the aircraft is a little bit more important. So that's where kind of this comes into play because Maverick, by all means, should probably be a high ranking you know admiral in the Navy at this right. point, but he isn't because he doesn't want to, he be to because he's so stuck in his old ways. Right. That is so relatable to me because I see that with veterans of the military mm-hmm. nowadays who have retired. They see the new format of of the military how it is now and they say and they say oh they had it easy they had it easy compared to what we did how do we know that they're as good as pilots as what we are right. so what i really like about uh, this idea of having uh captain pete uh mitchell pete maverick mitchell you know coming back and and playing this guy that just can't really let go of the skies like mm-hmm. that's just it, it has a very um uh the wrestler kind of feel to it okay you know how you know how mickey rourke really cannot give up wrestling when it probably could cost him his life Mm -hmm. and more than likely did at that on that last final shot um they it it has that sort of feel you're just putting fighter jets in instead Mm. so it's definitely it's i'm very interested I can understand somebody who's never seen it before would not be so interested, but your <laughs> no, opinion I'm, is wrong. I'm definitely, so. I'm, de- I'm definitely into it. I'm not going to say I'm not interested. I'm definitely into it. I can, I can say that the vibe that I get from the movie, you could definitely tell. You could definitely tell that, you know, it's a, um, it's a, a veteran, great at what he does, can't seem to really give up, you know, what he loves to do. So, and then you have what you have you know, that, that comes with it. But I'm actually really into the fact that 
Cruz, at this point in his career, can revisit old properties like a Top Gun and still make it like beyond exciting for people. You know, you know, for people who love the first movie, and for people like me who don't even know the first movie, but at least we like we still like seeing Tom Cruise run and gun. So I'm I'm into it for sure. And this is what summer 2020. Uh, yeah, it should be coming out j- uh, the end of June. I think June 26, 2020. Okay. It's, it should be a lot of fun. That's mm-hmm. kind of where I'm going at. I'll put it to you this way. Compared to like some of the products I've gotten for 2019, mm-hmm. I hope it's at least as good, if not better. Okay. Fair enough. All right. But obviously, this is Comic-Con, and the only way to end Comic-Con is to talk about Marvel yeah, at this now, point. Now, see, now you, you talk about me not putting no fun Mar- on it. Marvel. 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 <laughs> and, and, let, and let's break this down for a second. Marvel came through, which, by the way, they dropped out and then realized nobody was going. Yeah. I don't I don't understand that. I don't I, understand why nobody was going. It was a thing going on now to where, like, everybody just wanted to bow out of it. Like, almost like, where else are you going to go to really like, get this stuff out, to really get people excited for your product? I mean, Warner Brothers, they don't have their own con. I mean, obviously, Marvel could set out Comic-Con and go to D23, but, you know, Warner Brothers, they didn't go. Paramount didn't go. I don't think DC went. DC didn't go either. And you you guys don't have your own cons. You just opted not to go. Exactly. So, I'm really curious about the whole DC reasoning because if there was any time to really start talking about, like, the future of DC, mm-hmm. it would be it would have been now, right. especially especially because, like, isn't Wonder Woman 84 coming out like next next summer? Yeah. So it's like this would have been a great time to kind of Along start talking with, about um, uh, the Harley Quinn. Right. Movie. What about what about your DC TV shows that you could be talking about? Yeah. You know, they're, 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 see, that's what I'm saying. I feel like they dropped the ball. They really I'll, did. I'll tell you what. At the end of this, uh, at the end of this, uh, after we give our news, um, I want you to pick three winners and three losers of of attendees of Comic Con, basically. Okay. Like somebody who should have shown, somebody who didn't, so on and so forth. So what I have here, I currently have the uh, official uh uh phase uh, 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 announced phase four from the uh the almighty Kevin Feige. So before we begin with the news, I think the most surprising thing out of all of that is phase four is only two years. Which I find funny. <clears throat> I find Interesting. I, I also find that you they could actually have uh, film fatigue because there's a lot that's coming out for Phase Four, and they've already started planning for Phase Five. Clearly, with some of the news they yeah. Dropped. Now, see the, to speak on that really quickly before we get to the actual schedule here. I also feel like Phase Four is it for what for what, I'm, what I'm looking at right now. What we're gonna say here, I don't think it's complete. I think they're gonna edit some stuff up, add some stuff, and take off some stuff. Only because. Uh, the excitement that's, that's that's boiling around certain things that they've already announced. For example, to, to really get into it now. <clears throat> so there's 10 projects overall, including TV. Yes. So the kickoff phase four will be Black Widow, May 1st of 2020. Right. Thoughts? Uh, it's... What is the movie? I'm a little disappointed. Mm-hmm. And and I'll tell you why. It's not because I'm not interested in seeing, in seeing uh, the Black Widow storyline continue. Mm-hmm. Um, it's because we know what happened in Endgame. Mm-hmm. And because of this, this is clearly a prequel. Mm-hmm. So it's one of those sayings that that it's like, are you really sure that's the first one you want to release? You know, to kick off Phase 4. I'm with you. Now, with me, because we know what happens in Endgame, um, it's clearly going to be a prequel. Uh, why go this route? I mean, I'm 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 gonna watch it. I'm definitely gonna, gonna check it out. But why kick off this route? And another thing I, I had immediately noticed before we get to the rest of the schedule, there's no dates for Black Panther two. There's no dates for a possible Ant Man three. There's no dates for. There's no dates for Guardians three. No, but apparently according to Feige, uh, well we'll get to that in a second. <laughs> but um, you know, <laughs> Let, let's continue on with the list. All right. So next up, we got. Uh, Coming up November 6th of 2020 will so be... So we're talking movie at this point? Well, t- well no, take it back. So it'd be actually, next up would be the uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier. That's right. Fall 2020, which is going to be a Disney Plus show. Right. So so once again, this is going to coincide with... Doesn't Disney, does Disney Plus release this year or next year? Disney Plus drops in October. In October. So, mm-hmm. 
So to coincide with that, one year basically after Disney Plus has been out, the first Marvel TV show will actually be coming out. Uh, uh, will be coming out at that point. That's Falcon, uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. We'll see uh, Anthony Mackie and Sebastian Stan going back to their characters. Anthony Mackie also as Captain America. As Captain America. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, now the next one gets kind of interesting. I love the cast. Eternals, November sixth of twenty twenty. Yeah, let's talk about this cast for the a second. Cast is amazing, actually. When I saw when he announced Brian Tyree Henry, and then out comes uh, uh, Kamel and Johnny. Kamel and Johnny's in this. Yeah, Kamel oh and Johnny. Oh my god! Like that that that, that killed me when I saw that. Uh, so Richard Madden mm-hmm. uh, uh, has a role. You also had, and then and then what really shocked me. Than anything. Angelina Jolie. Jolie has an actual role and in this. She walks out on stage. Like, no problem. Like, nobody's no problem best. Salma Hayek has a role in, in the internals as well. Um, as well as uh, uh Lauren Ridloff and uh Ma Dong Siok. All right, so explain what the internals is. So <laughs> it's a little weird because it because it's it's kind of it's hard for me to describe what the Eternals is, but it, essentially think of it as a more souped up, souped up Avengers. Mm-hmm. Only they're very neutral in what they do. Like they don't, it doesn't necessarily have to be where they go for the good or the bad. They could just go based upon their own agenda. Right. Uh, in the Dungeons and Dragons world, we call that chaotic neutral. Mm-hmm. But, mm-hmm. <laughs> but that's, that's for uh, my view. So basically like the Eternals were like this, Experiment that was created uh, millions of years ago on these ancient humans, um, and while they resemble like 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 regular people, they're basically experimented on ancient humans as like flight, super strength, mind control, like shape shifting, energy projection, teleportation. And they've lived in these space cities and defended Earth uh, in this process, um, and they should. I'm not sure how they're going, and, and that's the thing. This is kind of where where I don't know where they're going to go with it, because the idea should be is that they face off against another group of villains called mm. the Deviants, okay. which is the, think okay, think of it this way: if you're if you're picturing the Eternals as one way or the other, the Eternals are super friends, and the Deviants is the is the, uh, the Legion of Doom. Okay, All right? you're right, super sense. friends. Mm-hmm. All right. That's the exact image that you should basically get. One is completely against the other, and they basically fought off uh, with each other. They've been throughout history here. Just nobody really ever knew about them. In theory, if I'm not mistaken, uh, I think at one point Thanos was an Eternal at one point. So uh-huh. so I – you can call me out on that if I'm wrong. <laughs> but I think he was an Eternal at one point. I know he was a Titan. I'm also certain that he was an eternal as well. So, uh, moving along, we got uh, February 12th, 2021. We have Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Now, here's why I love this. Because we're actually getting the fucking Mandarin. Yes. <laughs> an actual Mandarin, right. Which is my biggest complaint about Iron Man 3. Look, Iron Man 3, at the end of the day, probably isn't the worst Marvel movie I've ever seen. No. Even watching it now, it's fine. It's just this, they they took a risk and in my eyes they Charlie Browned it. Yeah, you know. But so now that they're actually bringing in a a true Ten Rings, all that. The one thing I hope they don't do is I hope they don't Mulan it, where it doesn't feel like a Marvel movie at all. Because this is definitely a movie. Yeah. Okay. Now, are you, are you familiar with the with the Shang Chi? Obviously, you are. Now, the Shang Chi character, what's him? What's what's him? What, first of all, what, what is he? <laughs> first of all, I kind of want to talk a little bit about the actor uh, himself, um, because he basically like tweeted this into existence. And what I mean by that is that he's been saying that he's he's been wanting to play a Marvel role. Uh, <clears throat> he's been wanting to play a a Marvel role since like two thousand uh, uh, four, and of course I'm talking about Simu uh, uh, Liu. Um, Shang Chi is. He's he's skilled at a couple things. He's obviously a martial artist, mm-hmm. um, which is uh, which is pretty clear. Uh, he also has this kind of really cool like self duplication mm-hmm. like thing that he does. Like, do you remember uh, X Men: The Last Stand? Yep. Remember Multiple Man, the mm-hmm. dude who could duplicate himself? Kind of similar to that. Okay. All right. So the idea should be is that he should have kind of like I don't want to say like a shadow, but a copy of himself that could basically fight off and, and do all this stuff. So again, we'll see. But he's a master of Kung Fu. Nice. 
So uh, now for me, this one, this where it, this gets kind of odd. I, I'm I'm with you on the Black Widow thing. I'm really with you on this one. Uh, spring 2021, uh, we're get, we're getting WandaVision, which is going to be a Disney Plus show. Uh, obviously, we have Paul Bettany uh, coming back as Vision, and we have uh, Elizabeth Olsen coming back as Wanda. Once again, if you've seen Infinity War or Endgame, you pretty much know how these how this plays out. But is this supposed to be a prequel? Because I hear it's supposed to be a sequel. Yeah, if a, a continuation after Endgame. So I'm interested in how they kind Where of bring that back. Where are we going back. with this? Because if you've seen Infinity War, you know exactly how this movie is. So this is where this is where I kind of have to get into a little bit of theory crafting. Um, and what I mean by that is this is is in theory, how could they actually pull this off? So there's this comic that came out, let's call it 15 years ago now. And the comic is called House of M. The entire idea of House of M is is what is black what is scarlet which is power mm -hmm. what what is the power do you do you remember uh all right remember how, remember how it was <laughs> in in ultron how she was able to go into somebody else's mind and change the reality of the situation right. mm -hmm. well the idea is that she's able to change reality in itself okay so could it actually be where she literally changes reality to bring back vision in his in her own eyes mm -hmm. and what happens if he goes away it's called wandavision so. exactly okay. which is why which is why i think this could kind of go that way okay. but we'll see uh now i am looking forward to this one though may 7th 2021 dr strange and the in the multiverse of madness mm -hmm. i am the down. first horror marvel movie mm -hmm. it's supposed to be a scary movie it's not supposed to be like like your typical Avenger style movie, you know, superhero. It's supposed to be a superhero horror movie, okay. similar to how Brightburn is. Okay. So I'm interested in it because they're also bringing in Scarlet Witch for that as well. Right. So now, now I'm curious if this is going to be like, okay, at the end of WandaVision, this happens, and then this is how it affects the movie. And I'm looking forward to uh, Doctor Strange too, only because I love Doctor Strange. Thank you. The first movie is so damn good. Thank you. Um, what Scott Derrickson was able to do with that character, nobody really saw it coming. I mean, it, it's supposed to be odd. It's supposed to be weird. And, of course. And, I mean, the world building, the world folding on itself, and it's just the way <sighs> he does it. I mean, Chris Nolan could, could probably do this movie. And, like, I'd be totally into it. Not only that, but but even like some of the animation that they did. Remember the cape against the guy? Yeah. And it's just, I died laughing at it because it just kind of was continuous after a while, mm -hmm. where the cape just kind of goes, wraps itself around this guy's head, mm -hmm. and just starts slamming his head on the floor. Mm -hmm. But it kept going even after he came back from another scene. You still see the cape still slamming this guy's head right. on the floor, <laughs> like. Like, I, I love that concept where it's just like, no, 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 no. No, your head's getting bashed in for a little while before you can start blocking this. But uh, but we do we will see the return of uh, Benedict Cumberbatch, Cumberbatch, Cumberbatch uh, as well as uh, Benedict Wong. And um, I do believe, uh, oh, wait a minute. Do we see the return of uh, Chiwetel Ejiofor's character? Maybe. We need that. Mordu? We need Maybe. Mordu back. And, of course, the ancient one, you know. No, she's dead. She died the first one. Didn't she? Yeah, she did. You're right. You're absolutely right. She only came back for Endgame because, well, they were time traveling. They were time. You're right. Absolutely. Uh, moving along. One I'm interested in seeing. I'm trying to figure out why we need it, but at the same time, I want to see what happens here. Uh, spring 2021 on Disney Plus, Loki the, the series. So they clearly stated that the Loki that was in Avengers: uh, Infinity War is dead, mm -hmm. dead, dead. This is the Loki before he rehabbed himself mm -hmm. uh, uh, afterwards to basically kind of be kind of be a lovable character. So he's supposed to be the evil version of himself all over again. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think about that? Mm. Well, for starters, I uh, I love Loki. I think Loki is uh, with argument's sake, Loki is definitely one of the more memorable yet fascinating villains in the. Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, Tom Hiddletitz is amazing. The way he actually conveys that character to be both lovable and you hate his fucking guts. Uh, it, but here's my thing. My fear is with Loki in this in this upcoming show, 
when it comes to Loki, I only want to see Loki when he's when he's going up against Thor, when he's going up against the Avengers, when he's going up against somebody. <clears throat> and, and that's not to say that's not going to happen, but how much fun can we actually have with him if it's just him? Yeah, I don't know. That, and- that's one of those questionable things. Now, the next show that's coming up after Loki, I'm really into seeing because it's, it's almost like our conversation that we, that me and you always have. Right. In series form. Right, exactly. Right? And that is, uh, December 2021, the series called What If. So, for those of you who aren't fully familiar and not comic book nerds, What If is a, is literally a series of, of comics in which they literally play out an alternative reality if, if, mm-hmm. if something happened. For example, like, uh, DC has a very popular one. Uh, what if, uh, the man, uh, the man of tomorrow never showed up, which right. is what if Superman never actually showed up? What would have happened afterwards? And it kind of goes through this whole spiel. Um, there's an entire comic because they actually announced the anime adaptation of this, uh, that could be considered a what if, mm-hmm. what if Superman landed in Russia during 1960s? Versus land, uh, versus landing in Kansas in the 1960s, right? And that turned into this whole beautiful comic called Superman Red Sun, um, which is which is really interesting. So, what's really great about this on the Marvel side, though, is you'll get the what if Daredevil actually saved Elektra. You know, what if you know, and you'll you'll start kind of going to like what the if weird the Hulk stuff. was actually able to make the snap happen? Right, exactly. Who I want to watch that? That's or good. or. Or what? Or, or what if you know Thanos wound up uh, wound up winning a second time? Right. You know, stuff like that. That's what I'm looking forward to. By the way, did you, did you hear this crazy this crazy concept they had for Endgame? No. They wanted to decapitate Captain America. Captain head. America. Yeah, I, I did read about that. What the fuck, yo? <laughs> where are we going with this? Like, 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 guys, guys, like, calm down. I, I was I was intrigued, but at the same time, I'm like, well, you can't kill Iron Man afterwards. Well, at, at this point, this is, this is a horror flick now, right? You're just you're 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 destroying like people's the past ten years of people's experiences. Yeah. You're just like, hey, hey, by the way, you know the comeuppance of Captain America, he gets decapitated. Chuck, we're good with it's you. Like what? <laughs> no, no, I refuse. <laughs> uh, but. Uh... So we uh, it's funny you brought that up actually. <clears throat> so we have two more. Two more. Uh coming up also Disney Plus Fall 2021. We're getting Hawkeye, the series. Uh interesting. Very much sure, so. Because this is supposed to expand further on what we saw in images of in Endgame, mm-hmm. where it's kind of a passing of the torch from Jeremy Renner mm-hmm. uh onto his daughter, Kate. But I, do believe, but, but I believe they're not going the daughter route this time. No, oh, they're not. It's supposed to be going a whole another route. It, it, it's definitely a an intern or, or whatever he does pass the torch on to. And I thought it was going to be his daughter as well because you know he trained her in, yeah. in, in Endgame. And, yeah, in Endgame. But apparently they're not going with the daughter. They're going with a whole different person. The daughter will come later. Huh. For what, I, for what I've been reading. Huh. Mm-hmm. Mm. Now, uh, now that gets interesting. <laughs> and uh, But you know what? Honestly, uh, I do like... The idea of a Hawkeye series, because like many people, people a lot of people thought that Hawkeye kind of got the shit in a stick in a lot of different ways. As far as like he's not, he's not even in Infinity War, we we now know why he's not in. Right. Uh, of course, and unless he's in Avengers, you don't really know much about him. He's not right. really around like that. Uh, right. So we get a backstory, but do we get a backstory exactly? So no. with this, we, we get to see him in full action. Uh, hopefully, we get the uh, the return of uh, Ronan. That would be dope if we could. Uh, which mm. I, do, I do believe is going to be coming back, actually. Hmm. Fascinating. Yes. Uh, and and finally, this time, I, I got to say, of all of them, I'm, I am at least very I, curious I think, about I, this. I think I'm probably the most excited about this one, actually. All right. I am. November 9th, 2021. Yeah, Thor. 9th. November 5th. I'm sorry. Okay. November 5th, 2021. Thor, Love, and Thunder. Now, this is not starring Thor Chris Hemsworth. This is Thor Natalie Portman. Lady Thor. Lady Thor. But here's the reason why I'm into this. Chris Hemsworth is going to be in it. He may not be the star of it, but he's definitely in it. Now, what Taika Waititi, who's now been confirmed as the director of, of Thor Love and Thunder. Who was the director of Thor Ragnarok. Right. Now, what Taika Waititi was able to do with, with Ragnarok. Is nothing short of amazing. 
He literally took a character I originally deemed boring. With the, with the Shakespearean vibe that he usually kind of throws out. I liked the first Thor movie. I thought it was okay. I really am not, I'm kind of not for the second Thor movie. But when I saw Thor Ragnarok, I literally fell in love with the character. I fell in love with the movie. It's a point to where I'm not looking forward to the next Thor saga. You know what I mean? Right. And what Ragnarok gave me was great action, great writing, great acting, and god damn was it funny. It's so funny. So for me, uh, now, only objection I, I guess you could say I have, because obviously, you know, Natalie Portman's been in this universe for quite some time. <coughs> However, don't forget. She, she's been in it since phase one. Right. Now, we've also were around when the Natalie Portman Marvel beef was really going down. Right. To the point where she, she was done with it, whatever, whatever. And then she pops up in Endgame. And then, you know, now all of a sudden we're seeing her a lot, a lot more now. I agree. And that's kind of a, it's a little weird. It is a little weird. You know, because this was this was mommy and daddy having a fight. Mommy literally walking out, and actually, you no, know, she's sleeping on the couch. Left the kids. You know, came right back. Left the kids. Came right back, sleeping on the couch, and now she's cooking bre- uh, breakfast for us. Now, next thing I know, they're they're renewing their vows, and and I gotta start calling her mom again. But uh, well, she left. <laughs> but uh, now, now this is what I, uh, I find interesting. Uh, Kevin Feige did say that immediately following Thor: Love and Thunder is Guardians Three. Which now makes you kind of wonder, Thor's going to be with the Guardians now for the third movie. So is it going to be the As Guardians of the Galaxy? I, oh, that's a horrible title. But that's also a title of a comic book series. It's still a horrible title. <laughs> what you don't you don't want to guard your ass? Of course, from the galaxy. Of course, yeah, <laughs> from the galaxy. But it's just uh, if, if they're going to go Guardians three directly after Thor: Eleven Thunder, then it's clearly Thor's going to be in Guardians three. Um. Uh. But before we get to that, to that oh. big one, go ahead. Uh, but there is also more news that came out of that same movie. Tessa Thompson is playing the, the official, first. Yeah. The first. Uh, uh, are they calling her? Are they calling her bisexual, or are they actually calling her lesbian? I want to call her lesbian. Okay, so the first official, openly gay character mm-hmm. uh, to to appear in the uh, mm-hmm. in the Marvel franchise. Yeah, I mean, Marvel, we know Marvel's known for like, you know, trying to break those boundaries and really kind of break barriers for sure. Like, yeah, but it's kind of taking them a little bit of time on some of the on some of the stuff as well. For example, but, uh, like, ahead, like, yeah. like a good example is is finally having the first female lead of uh, of a Marvel movie with Captain Marvel. Right. Like it took them um, 10 years to get to that point, right. which is fine, but it's it's not in everybody's timeline, especially in what in what today's society has kind of warped itself to be, mm-hmm. you know, but it, it is, it's still a good move. You mm-hmm. know, I'm definitely interested in, they couldn't pick a better actress to actually do it. In my yeah. Eyes. Uh, now for me, oh, that sounds fantastic. Um, now watching the, uh, the panel and Kevin Feige, he says, Let, we don't have enough time to go into everything. We're, everything we want to do, which made me, but, but makes me believe that there's more to phase four. They, they, they want to see how everything kind of falls together. Now, he did. He, he mentioned Captain Marvel two, no date. He mentioned Black Panther two, no date. He mentioned uh, Guardians three, really with no official date. We, we have an official date, but even uh, 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 James Gunn said, "I'm doing Suicide Squad before I do this first. Right, and we also don't know, you know, what's the future going to be for Spider Man because Spider Man's on his last movie, mm-hmm. which is weird. Mm-hmm. It's weird because I felt like we haven't had enough time to really spend with him as as a character. He's almost almost and, out of here, right? And now he's like, this kid's like twenty three. <laughs> <laughs> like, how are you almost out of there at twenty three? You know, this so, is a college. It, it's, it's it's weird. This is Marvel. It's it's weird, you know. Uh, but but I I can say this. I can say that. I also read that there was a deal in place between Marvel and Sony. If Spider Man Far From Home didn't crack a billion. They can walk away from that deal, which means Spider-Man goes back to Sony and stays or something. But I think it's cracked a billion at this point. At this point, it, 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 it has to. Uh, now, toward the latter end of this panel, uh, you know, by the way, would you want to get one of those cool hats that, that he made everybody put on? Yeah. Pretty yeah. dope hat, right? Yeah, they were. Uh, yeah. They were pretty cool. Okay, so Feige, in the most... G way possible. He said, "You know what? Uh, we have, we don't have time to get to everything, but just know we're working." Da da da. 
There is one thing, though, that <laughs> wasn't rumored. And then he, then he announces two-time Academy Award winner Mahershala Ali, who walks on stage as cool as he can be. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm thinking like, no. No, I can't be. No, nah, I'll wait. I'll wait. And he goes, Mercy, you, you, you brought a hat, right? He goes, yes, I did. And he puts on the hat. And if you watch the video, there's a chick in there going, what is it? What is it? I was that chick. <laughs> I was like, what, are you, what are you about to put on? So, so really, Jay was there. I was not there, but if I was there, I'd probably be loud as that chick. And he puts on the hat, and that motherfucker says, Blade. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Not to mention, as he puts on the hat, the official title logo for the movie is appearing behind them. And it looks great. The title does look great. So let me ask you this. We have, so, so they've not made it official. Mahershal Ali is not our new blade. We, we also know that Wesley Snipes has now sent his love and his praise for the new casting, even though people are. Most people are loving it. Most other people are like, nah, Blade is one of the snipes, or I don't want it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I don't. I don't think you can just. People are saying Blade is what's the snipes, or I'm not having it. it is it, it, are the same people? Look, <laughs> I recently watched, unfortunately, um, uh, the last Blade don't movie. Say Trinity. Oh uh, yeah, I watched Trinity. Ew. And Ryan Reynolds is still the best part of that movie. That's about it. Like, like he was totally, you know, was this time was definitely hamming it in at the at that point. At that point, for and, sure. And I and I hated Dracula. I hated him so much. Um, but you can't, you can't, you know, just pitch. Like, I have to be able to picture somebody else is going to wind up playing Captain America, and probably going to have to wind up playing Iron Man also. Dude, eventually, Wolverine. We, we, we eventually we will get a new Wolverine, right? Exactly, mm-hmm. and and especially because now Marvel owns Fantastic Four, and, and they've they announced own, that, right? They announced Fantastic Four, mm-hmm. and they own X Men now, and, and you know, so all of that. I can't, I can't honestly picture you know, uh, uh, Wesley Snipes and not playing Blade, but if there was a second person to actually pick, it definitely would have been Mahershala Ali. It also. Now frustrates me a little bit mm-hmm. because Mahershala Ali obviously was excellent in the role of Cottonmouth and Luke Cage, mm-hmm. um, and now that just basically means uh, all of that time invested into those four TV shows, five TV shows including the Defenders, um, they're not canon at all. No. Which which annoys me because Daredevil was really 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 six Punisher really yeah. fr- which really frustrates me now because both. Uh, Punisher, um, for the most parts of Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, they were all good to excellent shows. I, I, was, I, I was a huge fan of Punisher. I love Punisher. Uh, oh, it was and great. Luke Cage, in my opinion, was awesome. Daredevil so. was excellent. Well, that uh, first, that, well, that yeah. first season of Daredevil, mm-hmm. that first true fight scene where you felt like it was a continuous fight, mm-hmm. it wore you out just watching it. You like, felt like you were in there with him. Right, exactly. Right. And even though they were clever in how and how they did the, the the scene changes and whatnot, so that does annoy me. But bygones are bygones. If it's not canon, it's not canon. If they decide to somehow bring those back, uh, bring those into Disney Plus, I would love to see it. Mm-hmm. Um, especially for Phase Five to mm-hmm. really kind of bring those characters into there. Mm-hmm. But I, I, I'm really happy for Mahershala Ali. It could have happened to to <clears throat> a better actor. He's definitely right at the top of his game right now. Now, here, here's my theory on the Blade news. Now, personally, for me. I love the casting of Mahershala, of Mahershala Ali. Now, honestly, I can't think of nobody else who could play Blade except Mahershala Ali. Uh, as far as not, not, not off the top, not off the top, of not my off the top. No, and then, and then really, because the news it's it's surprising, but yet there's nobody out there who, who who can't say no. That fits very well, actually. Right, of course. And so, because he's cool, he, he's, he's he's cool like that. So I, what brings me to my next theory is. We're not done with Wesley. I feel like they're gonna bring Wesley and play Wesley. Uh, I don't like it. I lo- for, for, first ahead. of all, Whistler isn't even like a real. All right, there's this there's this really good comic. Um, that's that wouldn't work now that Mahershala is actually Blade. Mm-hmm. 
where they basically talk about like like the person who truly uh, raised Blade, like like showing him kind of the ropes of being you know of like trying to become like the like who he would wind up becoming. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a coming of age story. Um, I don't like the idea of of Wesley playing Whistler because I've never seen Wesley like be like super helpful in any role. Like, you know what I mean? True. But you know, mm. there's uh, what's his, what's his time? It's fifty six years old now. Sure. I mean, Marshall Ali is forty five, so he's not too yeah, far so away. Like... But but <laughs> but I I feel as if and and the beautiful thing is, is there's no backlash about this news. It's more so about but yeah, but what about what about Wesley? He because arguments are, arguments are being made without that first Blade movie. Kind of changing the landscape of how superhero movies are made. Marvel probably wouldn't be the way be, that is right now. Exactly. So, personally, for me, I, I feel like they don't owe it, owe much anything, except for the fact that yo, what you did for this first movie paved the way for what we now know as the Marvel, as the MCU today. Fine. I also feel as if the fa- the fans, while they're not calling for this is bullshit. No, I don't want Marshall Ali. They're also saying, well, how do we honor him though? Because don't forget, just it wasn't long ago when Wesley said, I've, "I've had meetings with Marvel about doing Blade again." Right, and that wasn't that wasn't that long ago. It wasn't but, long ago at all. But clearly, Marvel looked at it as, as like this: they basically said, "All right, we we have to picture that Blade at the earliest that it can come in is 2022." Yeah, because we've already had the schedule linked up. Now that's what brings me to what I was saying about as far as I don't think Phase Four is complete yet. I feel like the anticipation of this movie will bump it up. I don't. I I think that's a very good theory. I'd mm-hmm. like to see it in practice now. Mm-hmm. You know, um, especially because you've got because you got to think of Disney as you know. Uh, Disney pretty much is pretty much giving the reins to Marvel right now in terms of how they're going to make their money for the next two years. If you really honestly think about it. Because with the Star Wars, you know, ending this year, mm-hmm. we're not supposed to get another Star Wars till 2022. Well, we've got Mandalorian for next for this year. Mandalorian drops, I think, in December. <clears throat> but that's a TV show, right? Before Star Wars, anything like Star Wars like movie lore. wise, yeah, because they're making their money off, you know, the galaxy thing over in Disneyland, mm-hmm. you know, and that's probably going to do really well for them. But they're they're putting pretty much most of their chips on Marvel, Marvel. being. As good as it is. Here is where I have my concerns. I need to know that in phase two, who's the leader? Because for a good portion of, of Marvel phase one and phase two, Iron Man was the leader. Right. Which, you know, is, is kind of... It, it, it was, yeah. was kind of... Well, no. No, it really was. Until Winter Soldier came out, mm-hmm. it was the Iron Man show. Think about it. We had three Iron Mans before Winter Soldier came out because they saw it as like this great opportunity. We, I think Ultron came out before Winter Soldier came out. It did. So we had two Avengers movies and three Iron Man movies that all pretty much centered around Tony Stark mm-hmm. before Winter Soldier actually it actually came out. Right. Who is going to be the next person that's going to lead it? I mean, most people would say it's supposed to be Spider-Man. Considering how Spider-Man: Far From Home turns out, but with one movie left and and the looming shadow of Sony, yeah. you know that's going to be that that's going to be. I'm not saying that's not possible for them to resign, and it's very very possible that that could actually happen. Right. But most of the stuff that they're kind of pushing right now, well, they have four TV shows that are coming out uh, that that are supposed to push that right now, and that's fine. But TV shows don't make the money that you know. A movie does, mm-hmm. you know, again, oh, Avengers Endgame is now the highest grossing movie of all time officially this week, right. you know, so can we, can they say that they have a $2 billion pool right now in any of the movies that they're coming out? I don't know. Right. I would like to see it, right. but I don't know for sure. So they're kind of putting their chips a lot on a bunch of unknowns. Can Scarlet Witch actually hold her own? Can Doctor Strange actually become... The person that leads it, and if that's the case, is a horror movie the best way to personify to that? that? Yeah. So it's it's risky. It's a good kind of risk that Marvel can now take, but the minute that you start getting duds, you know, two, three, four, DC is looming in in the shadows also. 
They're, I, was, I, I feel like DC. I mean, though they've they produced <coughs> some great content the last year or so. I mean, I feel like they'll drop the ball in a heartbeat, man. Like you know, because they, they still don't they, they still don't necessarily know what they want to do. It's just I agree. Let's just throw to wall. Let's see what sticks. You know? I agree. So then, what about Sony? That that that's, could could yeah. Sony like Venom? At look at the end of the day, no, Venom wasn't the best movie to ever come out as a superhero movie. Mm-hmm. But I promise you this. If Venom had come out immediately after, say, Spider-Man 3 came out, before Amazing Spider-Man, a lot of people would have been really hyped up. I think a lot of people would have really liked it. Right. You know, it's just times are different now. But they do have the star power, at least with Tom Hardy, attached to it. Do you think, uh, with D23 approaching now, do you think we'll get more in-depth information about Marvel stuff? Probably. I think so as well. I Probably, but... It, it, I think the first place that we would actually find more in depth stuff is probably going to be New York Comic Con mm-hmm. uh, uh, that's coming up. But until that uh, until that comes up, then it's going to be it's going to be what it is. Yeah. Um. Uh. I I also read that uh, Joker is going to be uh, premiering at TIFF. Interesting. Very much so. I, I would have thought they would have brought something for Joker at this year's Comic Con. Interesting. I think. Because of the way that this Joker is being produced, because it's not a DC product per se. It's not based off of no kind of comic. It's a, it's a DC product, but it's not based off of continuity at right. least. Right. Um, I think that's where it kind of opens itself up a, a little bit to, to not be so criticized. Because mm-hmm. it's because what would have happened if they, if they would have presented the same Joker trailer against, against Marvel? It probably would have gotten lost in the shuffle, to be honest. Hmm. You know? Not saying that nobody's not interested in it. It's just we don't – We're it's such an unknown right now. And clearly they're, 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 trying to let, they're trying to let the mystery of it try to build itself. At least that's how I see it. What but, do you think? I'm, I'm with you. Uh, what I see out of this uh, Joker movie, now that he's, he's cleared it up saying it's not based off any comic book, which I'm like, okay, so you literally took the character of Joker and, and create a story around him, how he became who how, – how he became who he became. So now we know it's a character piece. I'm totally down for that, and you're right. It does kind of uh, gets the uh, the naysayers and the haters off your back because like now, what I'm giving you is a character piece of how a, how an iconic villain became how he became, and it's really based off of us as people. Anybody can can become the Joker, right? When you push too far, this is what happens, right? That was the whole point of right. Heath Ledger's Joker, exactly. You know, once you're pushed too far, you can turn to that life of crime. So you wanted to do the uh, the winners and the losers of Comic Con, right? Yeah. So give me three winners and three losers of Comic Con. So being so so, and it could be really anything. Losers: Warner Brothers, Paramount. No, I'm actually Paramount. Because Paramount actually won pretty well with Top Gun Maverick, actually. So I won't say Paramount, but Warner Brothers for sure. At DC, that's Warner Brothers. So I keep that them together. Uh, losers, losers. I'll come back to that one. Winners, though, I'm going to say uh, Marvel is the winner, most definitely. Right behind that, uh, It Chapter 2, uh, which is Warner Brothers, isn't it? I uh, I think so. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, my third winner would have to be... Uh, who's my third winner? I'm going to give it to the Russo Brothers. And the reason why I say that because they've come a long way. And really, because what, what Marvel was able to trust in them to do, they're now taking that ball and they're fucking running with it. Right. 21 Bridges looks okay, but they have way more stuff in the can ready to go. So, therefore, I think they're, they're going to take... I, what I appreciate the most about the Russo Brothers, they were literally comedy writers that turned into big action blockbusting, blockbuster directors. Right. And you can only respect that comeuppance. Right. So yeah, those are my three winners. Three losers once again. <laughs> Warner Brothers. Um, I can't say Disney because they, they, they got their own thing. Uh, Warner Brothers, man, that, that's probably your DC. That's fair. It could be anything else. Also, just keep that in mind. I'm trying to think. Uh, what else? What about Cats? You guys premiered at Comic Con. Cats premiered at Comic Con. I won't, uh, I won't say it as a loser. Cats looks fucking weird, bro. It just looks so odd. Dude, it, it looks bad. 
It looks so bad. It looks weird. <laughs> it's like when you, when you get that view of like Idris Elba as this like pimp daddy cat. I'm no, like, God, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, this shit looks weird. <laughs> and so what I thought was they're actually actors in cat suits. Turns out it's all CGI. Yeah, exactly. This uh, is so odd. I know it's so weird. It's so okay. Anyway, I mean, I mean, when uh, what's her name, uh, Rebel Wilson. When they showed, like, Rebel Wilson as a cat, I was like, no! That looks weird! I'm telling you, I was weirded out by Jennifer Hudson as, like, the dirty street cat. Mm. Uh, mm-hmm. Jason Derulo as this, like, hip-talking, come, singing Come on, cat. man, you can't say that that's a winner. It's, it's definitely not, it's a not loser. A, it's not a winner for me at all. I can't say it's a loser because I haven't seen the movie yet. But based off a trailer, this shit looks odd. It just looks so weird. And Idris Elba's the pimp daddy cat is just weird to me. You know what I'm saying? But... <laughs> Hopefully he, you know, he, he turns it around next week when we see Hobbs and Shaw. But uh, three winners, three losers. What you got? All right. Uh, and, and again, I want to expand this out a little bit to not just be, um, uh, to not just be about the movies wise. You obviously went studio wise. I'm going to go a little bit different. Uh, winners, uh, TV show adaptations, Watchmen, Witcher, Expanse. Yeah. Those yeah. all looked solid. Right. Or at least good. Mm-hmm. It got me excited to want to subscribe to uh, to that stuff. Mm-hmm. To actually watch it or at least, you know, watch it off Cody. Um, <laughs> you didn't hear it here. <laughs> uh, Marvel being the big one. And mm-hmm. more specifically with Marvel, uh, the announcements of Mahershala Ali and Natalie Portman walking out, receiving her hammer yeah. as well. That was a really cool moment. That was a good moment. Um, yeah, definitely a good moment. Especially because like like – that really felt that that really felt like a like a, a special, really something special for it, you know. So it's it's kind of like a, you know, Kevin Feige, you know, he like tried to pull his like Steve Jobs thing. He's like, oh, and one more thing. Well, you know? I, okay, so to, to to jump off that real quick, you realize that when Angelina Jolie walks into a room, the room mm-hmm. goes nuts. Oh yeah. But this time, even though the room went nuts, she wasn't the biggest draw. No. Marissa Ali was the biggest Exactly. Draw. Which is really awesome. Awesome, right? It really is. Mm-hmm. Um, finally, <clears throat> I'm going to say horror movies in general. Okay. All the horror movies, the, uh, correction, It Chapter 2, uh, the concept of, of Doctor Strange as a horror movie, and also Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, those are all, that, that all sounds interesting to me, mm-hmm. at least to, to at least want to check them out. You know, so those are my three winners. Uh, losers, Comic Con in general. This was the 50 year anniversary of Comic Con, mm-hmm. and it felt lackluster. Yeah, it felt like, a, like, like again, like you could have nailed. Imagine people buying tickets for this, like mm-hmm. 350, 500 bucks, you know, just to go wait in line, see all the big news that's supposed to come out. It's not cheap. You know, right. that that's a week of your time they have to take away. Comic Con in itself, it, it just. It didn't hit what needed to hit. And is it me, or, or could you agree that Marvel kind of saved it? Because if Marvel stayed gone, it, if, there's no no one's here. If Marvel if Marvel leaves, then then you know, then it literally probably would have been one of the worst experiences for a lot of people. Wow. In my eyes, that's great. Uh, another one, Game of Thrones. Mm. Game of Thrones. Yes, the show is over, and we're talking about whatever the prequel and whatnot, but. Um, the fact that they just straight up dropped, and these are supposed to be the showrunners for uh, what are they? What are they tackling together? Um, the showrunners of Game of Thrones is tackling like a pretty big project. I read about something. I can't necessarily figure out what that is. Sorry, I, I'm not going to bother looking it up. But but they were. But you know, this was supposed to be that time for you to like really go. Really go and kind of like celebrate yourself. Yeah, like your hit show just ended. Right. And what do you got for us next? Uh, uh, not only that, but, you know, it kind of gives you a time to, to, to let fans, you know, voice their whatever, you know. And obviously, Game of Thrones final season wasn't well received at all. No, it wasn't. Um, but for them to straight up drop, like out of nowhere, mm-hmm. it, feels, it, it feels almost cowardly. Mm-hmm. Like, like, hey, man, you got to face the music. This was the product you decided to push and you decided Wonder to present. Runners. You know, exactly. HBO was a time one company. So I'm not sure if that was a decision by them, but it definitely could have been. 
Uh, and finally, loser. I mean, I, I guess I won't go cats. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, DC. I'm, yes. I, I, I am disappointed that I, we didn't get anything. Like, and keep in mind, obviously, New York Comic Con is coming up, and they could obviously steal the show very quickly, uh, very quickly over there. But you cut, you guys couldn't talk about anything. You, you couldn't. Come on, I mean, you, you showed, you showed the poster of Wonder Woman 1984. Why not bring her out? You know, for a small presentation. A give us, give us, give us a a, a thirty minute, uh, give us an hour presentation mm-hmm. of what you guys have got going on. And right. that's and that's perfectly fine. Right. Talk about the successes you've had from Aquaman through Shazam, which, by the way, I've watched a second time now. It's still just fucking it's, good. It's, really good. it's so good. It's really good. It's so good. <laughs> um, um, and, and and again, and then bring out Wonder Woman in her actual attire because we're a year out from from your your works. big presentation. So right. it's like it's like we need something because. Henry Cavill's on the screen right now as the Witcher. He's not on the screen as Superman, as Superman anymore. Right? Mm-hmm. So what are you guys doing? So to me, that they really uh, they dropped the ball. Yeah. They 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 could have they could have done so much more with yeah. that. Well, um, that was Comic Con 2019. Um, San Diego, so Diego Comic Con 2019. We uh, will have a recap of New York, obviously, mm-hmm. once that hits. So and we'll, we'll probably we'll get to do that. something for D twenty three. Who knows? But I think um, I think Marvel is setting themselves up pretty good, and uh, we just have to see what happens from there. I think Marvel. I think Marvel is literally doing the hey, let's see what sticks. Basically, you know, because in, in all seriousness, somebody from the TV shows could also take up that helm. What if mm-hmm. Falcon winds up being an, an excellent leader at the end of the day and they decide right. to give him his own solo movie? Right. Would people go out to see it? Probably. Anthony Mackie is still is still a pretty good draw in my eyes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, um, <laughs> Black Mirror aside. <laughs> <laughs> well, that being said, let the people know where they can find you. Uh, you can always find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at David Danger Neff. Also, technically on Snapchat um, as I decide not to delete that. He's snapping. I'm snapping currently. Snapping. Uh, I'm the co-host here uh, for Back to the Classics, part of BeatNetworkOnline.com. For those of you who are interested into doing advertising, or if you are in the Las Vegas area and you wish to uh, present, uh, and you wish to present a podcast format or have an idea for a podcast, and you wish to have this produced or edited, please, please, please reach out to us. I'd be more than happy to uh, to talk with you about what we can do for uh, for you in terms of editing, anything along those lines, and and you know let's get let's get you started as well. So please reach out to me at David uh, uh, David Danger Neff. You can also uh, hop on the page of our uh, Instagram BTTC podcast. Reach out. I'm connected to that as well. I usually let Jay handle that. So that's that. Uh, I am thinking of doing movie reviews and specifically. Putting that as spoiling the classics, which could be a fun idea where we just kind of upload stuff from our own, you know, phones and then just kind of going from there because Mm -hmm. we we need to bring something back as as much as we can. And Mm -hmm. I know you guys love to hear our wonderful voices most times. And Um, we we love to talk to you. (laughs) So please uh, let us know. My guy, Jay Alonzo, where can they find you? You can find me on all the uh, social media simply at I am Jay Alonso. That's Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter. You talk to me and I'll talk back. Of course, the uh, Facebook group, Back to Classes, a movie talk group, is up and popping. Go ahead and jump on there and uh, join the conversation. Of course, uh, David Danger Neff is very prominent over there, as well as Spoiling the Classic, another movie talk group on Facebook. Um, with that being said, BeatNetworkOnline.com. You can find uh, your links to all your favorite Beat Network shows, including this one right here. And uh, shout out to the whole Beat Network crew. Shout out to the whole iHeartRadio crew. Uh, damn, we're back next week, man. It's, it's good are. to be back like a Sicily again. Yeah, it's, it's about time. It's about, it's about <laughs> that time. But we're, we're kind of working out the kinks and all that. And uh, hey, man, I'm, I'm talking to you every every week. So yeah, of course. Yeah, but with that being said, this is about the classics. I am Jay Alonzo. With me, of course, David Danger. Now, see you next week. Peace. Peace. <laughs>